so this is number two. Okay, so this is number two. Okay, um, there's going to be a few of these. It's just a boring alert if you're watching this for the first time. This is technical stuff, uh, boring for most, but it's for those that really want to know what's going on with the 580 and especially the owners and the builders and uh, people that might be considering it. Uh, I reckon the 580 is one of the neatest little boats. I've had about 17 boats in my life, everything from 36 metre, eye strengthened, helicopter equipped. Uh, 600 ton expedition vessel that we went all over the world did crazy things down to trekker <laughs> so and this one does it all it's got everything that you'd ever want in a boat so a um, bit of fun anyway uh, carrying right along this is my number one favorite thing on the boat it's the dodger okay uh, put together by these guys um, you know i'll put the links so you can talk to these guys if you want to uh, yes they did sponsor me with this and i'm quite happy but what happened is i went to them and i said hey uh, you guys built jean luc van and he's dodgers you know i really like them i this is what i want will you come and do it and they looked at this they said, you're doing what a 19 foot boat across the atlantic and uh, in the end they uh, came and took it on as a great project it was last minute because as you know those that followed trekker um you know i was panicked at the end and i was organizing everyone else in the event and all the things we do in life and i was desperately running out of time they dropped everything after the pavois boat show and and we got exactly what we wanted which is fantastic so uh, safety color which which is pretty cool um but but basically the first thing is about this that it what's it for we have a, a, a hatch here a deck hatch on the companionway and when you're coming in and out of the companionway it's very simple that, that you might get a sneaky wave comes through and and smash up to the side of the boat and as you coming out you're going to get water down the boat um, I was adamant I did not want any water down the boat and I've never had any water down the boat it was completely dry during the transat uh, dry bunk uh, it was fantastic and this this dodger saved me uh, uh, the three there were three big ones that came through if the dodger wasn't there I would have got probably you know somewhere between uh, 20 and 20 gallons and and a lot more splashed down to the boat you know which was was a pain so that's that one that, that, that's the first part it just and it also means that if they are worried about rain or just general spray it stops all the light stuff going in you can leave the companionway open because ventilation is really critical and uh, it's incredibly strong when they brought it back they had big tubes big one inch stainless steel tubes in I thought oh, that's a bit strong but in hindsight the amount of times you're grabbing onto this you know is is really intense and there's two straps there's a strap here another one there another one there so it's a pretty simple principle it was always designed from the very beginning when i did the stainless steel rail i designed the concept built the rail particularly for this dodger okay um and it, it it's really cool uh, a couple of things you can do when you're going down if you if if i was here and i wasn't didn't have a harness and i was worried because i wasn't flipped on often in the in the cockpit unless it was really bad but sometimes a sneaky one comes i could always get into here and hang on and it's very hard to get washed out of the thing I, a couple of times i did that i never got washed out because the wave didn't come but it was a sudden jump down there there's a bit of security you can sit here and and uh you can actually i can sit here in the back if i want to if it's raining sounds corny it's only water i know but it's raining you can sit under here that's kind of cool you can get out of the sun which is also cool um and uh and you know everything about it is great when you're coming in and out um it's a, it's a big bonus so uh, i was happy with that uh, and I'd recommend it to anyone, depending on the type of companionway. Uh, these guys can build any type, but if you're doing a bubble and you copy this rail, you could get one of these off the shelf. Uh, they've got a form you can fill out which uh, allows you to do certain modifications uh, and so on, but the general principles are fantastic. And it's very easy to get rid of as well. If you don't want it there, this is the other big bonus, if you're at the start of an event and there's no big waves, you just loosen off the four straps, okay, uh, just like this like that put that down undo the clips like that okay i've got a dud finger here undo those undo that one oh, not enough off there okay undo that one off there and the whole thing just folds away so if you don't want it it's just back here like that okay and uh, then you can do all the, all the usual stuff, you know, you can just, that's what I do at the starts. You have that uh, back like that, and uh, it's no drama. You can just shut your, shut your hatch, everything's normal. But when you want it, you just pull it out and it's there, and it's really strong. So, uh, 
so yeah I was very happy with this dodger when we go down below I'll show you a bit more on that but, but for there the other thing I'd say in these these granny bars I call these my granny bars this is this is also a really cool thing uh, because I used it all the time you know when you're going up on the deck here you're hanging on there hanging on there uh, you can't get thrown sideways this protects if I had a dismasting touch wood it protects the bubble from the mast falling down or boom dropping or anything like that so yeah I really like this this handles many of the builders you'll have an observation pod here you know the obs pod the standard deal that's got to have handles down the side that's really important so it's a similar situation when you're um, going up on deck uh, that you do use that a lot okay um, so uh, so while we're talking about this so uh, we can see it here a couple of things you'll see we've got a dorade vent you've got to have at least uh, two minimum two ventilators on the boat uh, three are recommended okay because you do get you ask Etienne and the others when you shut that hatch it gets very hot very quick and if it's a if it's a big storm you're going to have the hut, hatch shut so I've got two Dorade uh, one Dorade vent up there on deck and then I've got two mushroom vents back here okay whoop <laughs> whoop 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 don't push the phone use the other one um, okay here we go yeah I've got these two mushroom vents here uh, some boats now I've seen they're putting them on the side new rule which will come out uh, in in days probably you, the, the vents aren't allowed any further than 60 centimeters off the center line because when the boats on its side if you do your mast pull down it floats you know even the cabin top doesn't go under the, the ports go under uh, but in real life when you're on your side when the waves are here the waves are surging in here you know there's all white water here so if you've got a vent there it's going to down flood into the compartment you don't want that um, so vents will have to be no further than 60 centimeters off the center line um, okay so uh, what I've got here I've got my little Simrad chart plotter that's cool that was all I needed uh, Simrad. I've got a speak here and sound system that's just for weekends in La Sable de Lone. you know you don't really need that because I used a sound box but that's my chart plotter I've got a, a um, Advan C uh, echo sounder Plastimo echo sounder there very simple digital echo sounder I've got my uh, compass on the other side here I've got a, a small contest compass and uh, that's really the the only electronics I've got out here I only use one compass because I've got a telltale compass inside the boat which is a Plastimo hand bearing compass and if I'm on this side of the boat I need to steer I just bring that compass out and I put it in the rope bag here I just drop it in there line it up and I've got a second compass there so I've got a compass on each side um, you know because you need you need a telltale compass down below you know that's that's really you're always looking to see where you are and what you're doing um, but a bit more on that uh, later when we get down below so um, okay again safety wise uh, you'll see first of all we're now going to mandate that you must have 450 cent four, four, four fifty centimeter uh, uh, height in your push put and your pull put on the plans it says 40 centimeters but you'll find on all your registrations uh, if you're in EU they want to know it's 45 centimeters so that's they're going to have to be 45 centimeters now if they haven't or if you haven't already built them and secondly you need a two rail at the back here but we're going to carry the second wire all the way to the front to the pulpit it's not shown on the plans at the moment so that's going to require a second wire down here because I had a situation this one when I was laying on the deck and the boat inverted the other way not inverted but went down the other way and I was perfectly safe because I was clipped on but you could easily get posted like a delivery like a letterbox straight under that top rail or one of the rails might break and it's very easy to do uh, so that's going to be a new rule that you'll have to have two two uh, ropes or wires going through and uh, by doing that it also means that when we put the staunchions on the side here some people have already suggested it's unsafe because we don't have 450 centimeters up off the deck here but this isn't this this is the cabin top not the deck the, the technical line is the uh, shear lot the, the gunnel going around the bottom so uh, if we have 450 there 450 there when the staunches are on the side it doesn't matter we take the hull deck join as being the measuring point so it means we're uh, meeting all the international requirements which is which is uh, a good thing to do um, the other thing is we're uh, not going to certify any boats that don't have handrails as per the plans going all the way through so you'll see on, a, on mine later on anytime you look at the bow I've actually got a handrail right under the pulpit that's important because you can still get pushed through the pulpit there and you're not just using it for handrails you're using it as foot rails and when the boats on its side you're looking for grab holds you, you want somewhere to put your foot so you don't go through so um, so yeah you'll have to make sure that you've got either a handrail up there on your pulpit or a, a flat rail joining the legs or something just so you don't flip through there because we've, we've noticed that uh, the other thing um, while we're talking that uh, the stainless steel um, push pit uh, pulpit rather sorry the stainless steel bowsprit can you walk up this way keep coming keep coming we're going to look at the bowsprit now uh, you, this bowsprit here 
is pretty much done as per the plan and that's going to be a requirement now. Uh, some people have already done bow splits that are too light, uh, they're not the same diameter, they're not, they don't have the same structure, they're not as strong, they're trying to save weight, we're not going to allow that now so uh, uh, you'll have like a week to uh, get, you, get your photos in of what you've already got and then that'll be grandfathered but after that you're going to have to build it as per the plan. Oh, what's happened? Here it comes. No, something's happened. Don't hold the phone. This is. It's flipped. Is it right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, so yeah, we're going to be monitoring that more carefully because we don't want people trying to save weight and decreasing strength. Um, with with tracker here, this isn't right. You know, welding onto there uh, means that if I want to take this bowsprit off now to put in a container, I've got to unbolt it off the deck here, which is a pain in the ass. So um, so yeah, try not to do that. That should be on the deck here, and then you just have your stainless steel bowsprit uh, connected to uh, the hull by bolts, so it's easy to get off and put in a container. Um, so uh, anyway, but that's another issue. Um, okay, so uh, remember, uh, oh, what can I talk about here? Okay, how long are you going for? 11 minutes now. 11 minutes, okay, so we're still going. Um, okay, my suggestion on hatches, this is really cool having a hatch this way. You very rarely open at sea and you want the air down there when you're in port. But the hatch under the mast there, your ventilation hatch, I'd recommend you, ho you hinge that the other way around so you can open it while you're at sea and any spray coming across doesn't go straight down below. Because I could virtually never open that hatch at sea unless it was really dead calm. Um, so uh, yeah, just once again. Now the sheeting track here for the Genoa, uh, so Jim got his track all wrong, it's right out on the gunnel which is too, way too wide. Uh, just look on your plans and you'll see there's two little marks there where there's meant to be a dead eye. It, it, it lines up the centre of the sheeting and that puts your position about here and then you, you put your one metre track, angle it in at about so it's heading towards the bow a little bit and that's the perfect position for your sheeting but uh, I don't want too many people to get that wrong because it affects the sail shape uh, quite a lot. Uh, what have I got down here? Um, okay, we'll start talking about the rig. So I've got the um, the Sparcraft rig, which I'm really happy with. Uh, and on the mast base, I've got a few more blocks here. Uh, and uh, these are the plugs for um, the uh, nav light, which is a plug. So I can just take that off and unplug it when I'm ready to pull the mast down. And this is the cable for the uh, VHF radio, which I can take the cap off here, open it up. You've seen how they work. It means I can unscrew the coax from the back of the uh, radio, which is in the main cabin, and wind run it all the way through the bulkhead has another gland in the in the watertight bulkhead and pull it pull it back out here so I can pull the mast off and it's very easy to reconnect I have uh, this is my main halyard and then I have a luff uh, uh, and leech reefing system uh, which is very simple so these are my three luff lines uh, for, so, sorry three leech lines for reefs reefs one two and three and this is my vang okay so that's all that's where they're all coming from I have my spinnaker halyards I have one of them at the back of the boat and uh, one at the mast because if it's the the uh, the, the, the J3 uh, the big kite I want to drop that from the cockpit and hoist it from the cockpit so that's back at the cockpit but for the one that's up now the uh, the J5 uh, I can have that at the mast and I can just hoist it pull it down really tight tie it off and leave the tail at the mast because that stays there that was there for the whole 3,000 mile trip you know just leave it there you can pull it in and out as you need it and uh, it's very simple on the other side I've got uh, uh, the three luff reefing lines so I've got another three blocks there uh, plus the uh, halyards and stuff so I've got that's my topping lift I've got a, a green topping lift there so it will spare main halyard and uh, and the other the re re green one here is the actual uh, uh, spinnaker halyard back in the cockpit uh, so I've got a total of one two three four five six seven eight nine ten blocks there I've also got the outhaul um, for the boom outhaul for the clue of the mainsail back at the cockpit as well uh, pretty simple um, the other one I've got here is this, this attachment point there is from a safety harness. That's my favourite one because I've got a short strop on my harness. But when it's, when it's clipped in there, I can lay down, it's two meter, a bit less than two metre harness, um, I can lay down and I can still reach right to the bow. Okay? Because the big thing here is, it's not so much being clipped on the boat, so when you fall over the side, you're actually able to stay with the boat. 
if I fall on the side on this boat, I'm probably dead because I won't get back on board. You know, that's the reality. Um, you know, you can think about it, and there is a system you can use, and I, I have it available. It's like a prussic loop for those that are climbers. It's the really thin line with a clip on it and a strop in it, a foot strop. So if you end up over the side, as long as you can reach up and clip that line onto something, you can pull it out, and you've got a foot strop to put your foot in, and you can hoist yourself up a bit. But the reality, the majority of people, if you're over the side, on, even on this boat, you're not going to get to the back of the boat. You won't be able to unclip, and you're probably going to hang on the side of the boat and smash yourself. You go unconscious, and you're dead. So you really need to stay with the boat all the time you know hopefully it'll work but um, I have a, a webbing web you need a tag line to hit like a, um, a safety line where you can attach onto and go forward but I virtually hardly ever use that because I know that if I'm gonna fall I need to be uh, right way around what's happening here uh, okay um, so uh, that's some interesting points there so yeah so that's my favorite uh, attachment point um, uh, what else can I tell you here now? So uh, this, um, the I can get a little bit into sails on this one. The sails are fantastic. No one had any sail issues on the way down. The, the quality is good, the shape is good, it's got all the features you want. Um, with the main sail, the biggest pain in the ass is that with a flat top main you have a diagonal uh, batten and that diagonal batten means when you drop it down uh, it won't fold all the way down unless you take the cars out and for me on the on the Sparcraft one it's a pain in the ass quite literally I've got this sliding bolt here uh, which means to get to the top one out I've got to undo all of the batten uh, I take out all the batten cars here all of them out before I can take the top one out so it wouldn't happen you know I just leave it there and I'd, I'd tie it down but the Selden mast has a really cool uh, like a really cool system where you can take out any any of the cars you want as you as required so that's kind of cool but yeah the sails are fantastic um, my furling head sail uh, was brilliant I don't know how the guys with Hanks get by if I was club racing I'd have Hanks but if I'm voyaging I'd have the furling gear every time I'll talk more about that later uh, the Blue Shark uh, blocks are really cool. The Blue Shark uh, furling gear is really good for the for the um, uh, for the Jenica. Some of you might not have seen this. Uh, can you come up here? Come up here. This is the continuous the continuous line uh, Jenica. They're only small, but boy, that took a hammering. You know, like it took a real hammering. It's still going fine. It's got an anti-twist torsion rope there, um, and it's been there for bloody. In fact, it's been there since I left uh, Lagos, you know, but I'm about to take it down because we're doing a race tomorrow and I can't use it, so uh, a day race, um, a local one here. So, um, so yeah, so the Blue Shark gear is really good. We had a little problem with the jammers. The springs are failing on some of them, and uh, Blue Shark are going to replace them. They've got uh, aluminium ones, so the next mass orders are going to have different different, uh, uh, different uh, makeup. Um, uh, spinnaker pole system we don't recommend storing it on uh, on the mast you have to have somewhere for the round the world race you'll have somewhere where you've got to store it on deck if you get dismasted you'll lose your spinnaker pole as well if you store it there but it's a very convenient place to leave it because you're booming out head sails all the time back and forwards and and that's uh, actually quite uh, uh, quite convenient to do so that's easy um, what else can I tell you here uh, yeah, I really fell in love with my my uh, head sail reefing system. It's it's ex absolutely perfect. Uh, you could do a lot of things with that. Um, okay, so I think that's probably enough now. How long are we going on that one? Uh, 18 minutes. 18 minutes. Okay, so we might uh, might can that one. We'll come on the boat and do some things. So uh, there'll be an episode three coming up soon. See you then.